Good afternoon. My name is James K. Holder II. Some of you may know me as Sir James II. I'd like to welcome you back to the Weekend 10. This is your weekly 10-minute recap of the week's top 10 stories. And I'd like to first ask you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I want you to retweet this video and repeat this. If you're watching, today is Friday, July 6th, 2018, and I'd like to wish a happy birthday to a pair of my favorite people, Tia and Tamara Mori. And I also want to give a very special happy birthday to Mari Kopany, who is better known as Little Miss Flint, is also her birthday. So let's celebrate those young ladies today. One big thing that's happening this weekend, which is the release of the movie, Sorry to Bother You. Now this is a huge film for the summer. Um, it stars my absolute favorite, Lakeith Stanfield from um, Get Out and also Atlanta. Uh, it also stars Tessa Thompson, and there are many, many other notable um, actors being featured in this uh, film that you'll love, including Terry Crews, uh, Stephen Yun, who, is, who played Glenn on um, The Walking Dead, and also uh, Danny Glover and Army Hammer. I mean, there's just a lot of people in it, and um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of publicity around it, so I'm hoping it's going to be good, and I hope you all go check it out. Um, secondly, the Statue of Liberty Climber um, has been identified as 44-year-old uh, Staten Island native Therese Patricia Okomu. Now, she is originally of the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. She is a naturalized citizen in the United States, and she's also a, an immigrant activist. So she is the woman who daringly climbed the base of the uh, Statue of Liberty on 4th of July and refused to get down until police basically dragged her down from uh, the feet <laughs> and the hem of the garment of the Statue of Liberty. And she was cheered on by uh, people at the steps of the courthouse in New York when she was there being arraigned. Uh, and she uh, quoted Michelle Obama in saying that when they go low, we go high, and she said that she went as high as she could go. She was also wearing a shirt that stated, white supremacy is terrorism. So speaking of more white supremacy in America, uh, a Winston-Salem man was fired from his job <laughs> after calling the police on a young mother and her son, who were black, for swimming at the public pool. Now this is a pool that is in their own community. They have a gate where you have to access with your key card or, you know, your community key card. You put it in and it, oh, it unlocks the door. You go in, you generally sign in at the lifeguard station, and then you enjoy your time at the pool and then you go home. Now, this wasn't good enough for the young man who is currently looking for somewhere to, to work now uh, because he was being a racist asshole and called the police on this young mother. Now, he accosted her at the pool, demanded that she show him her ID, demanded that he tell her her, her home address, demanded all of this information from her, and it just really was a sad display. There are two police officers who are working to de-escalate the situation, but there really shouldn't have been a situation. Uh, kudos to the police officers involved. Kudos to the young black woman and her uh, child for being uh, patient and dealing with the situation. She was very calm with everyone. She asked for an apology. He refused to give her an apology after uh, calling the police unnecessarily. She apologized for the, to the police for having had their time wasted. It really was just a waste. I'm glad no one was hurt. It really is just somewhat sadistic. I mean, it's almost like he has a personality disorder because he's just so deadpan and dry. And he really, even in the face of the police, when the police are, the police are actively demonstrating how her card works, just like his card works, how she has an ID, how all, everything she could possibly do to show that you're wrong, he's still demanding of her that she show him her ID and driver's license that proves her address in front of the police officers. It's, it's quite absurd, but we'll see. He's now going to be looking for somewhere to work, so I hope he's get used to people asking for his resume since he wanted to ask that lady for her qualifications to swim in her own pool. Ridiculous. Um, four. A tourist boat in Phuket tipped over this week and it actually killed uh, 33 people. Um, and sadly, um, 
tens of other people are also missing. So I don't know, there's not a final tally on this, but this is um, in Asia, I believe in Phuket. Is Phuket in Thailand? I think that's where it is. Um, it's just like one of those tourist destinations. And so it's, it's really sort of a tragic story out of uh, Phuket. So please be careful. I know it's vacation season and everybody's trying to get out and have fun and do exotic things, but you've got to be careful. And this is just a tragedy. It couldn't have been um, really avoided by anybody, but just be very careful when you're out uh, traveling. Um, more tragic news. Three Canadian YouTubers died in another tragic accident involving a waterfall. Now this is, in, this is uh, Riker Gamble, Alexi Lee, Liak, and Megan Scraper. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing those names. I'm not familiar with their YouTube channel, but it's a big story because these are uh, people who just post on the same communities that we do, but there is a uh, GoFundMe page that's been set up by the community of artists that they work with and um, they're going to try to put together a memorial for them uh, to sort of celebrate their lives. Um, sadly, singer Chris Brown was arrested in uh, West Palm Beach, Florida yesterday. Now, this is based on a felony assault charge or felony battery charge. And this is having to do with a case from involving a photographer that he allegedly assaulted um, and this was over a year ago. So they finally arrested him. He wasn't in jail for very long, but um, it just goes to show like it's really sad that Chris Brown seems to be trying to get it together, but it's almost like that past, you know, that behavior just follows you where you go. So uh, good luck to Chris Brown. Uh, hopefully you can, you know, sort through all of this and, and make everything right. Number seven. Students in Atlanta are lobbying for the new Amazon headquarters to be, to be held here. Now, uh, I fully see why this is happening. Uh, I think the big leaders on this are students from Emory University's campus, but Amazon would do well to have a campus based, on, based in a city that has such a diverse student body um, and also a diversity of concentrations. Now, I don't know if that's what Amazon is looking to do. I don't know if they're trying to just bring a bunch of people in from California or Washington or wherever, but um, let's hope that if the Amazon headquarters ends up in Atlanta, that there is some boost to the economy in the, in the form of like jobs for Georgians and students in the area. Um, I am late to the party on ResistBot. One great tool to resist that's been around for, well, since, you know, the Trump era began is the resist bot now this is a twitter bot um, that you can follow at resist bot um, but it's also available via text and if you want to you can it's an automated basically uh, system that helps you write letters to your congressman or women and uh, you can text capital r-e-s-i-s-t to 50409 or you can send a direct message to at resistbot and it'll basically prompt you to tell your address and your uh, information, all the information it needs to draft letters on your behalf. It'll store a profile for you and anytime you want to write a letter to your senator, all you'll have to do is just type the, the message um, to the phone number and it will draft the letter and send it off for you and you can have your voice heard without actually having to use your voice. I am very excited to announce that new episodes of The Counter will be returning to YouTube and other uh, platforms um, this coming week. So Tuesday, you can look forward to the premiere episode of um, The Counter Season 2, Episode 1. And finally, I want to wish an enjoyable Essence Festival to everyone in New Orleans this weekend. I'm wishing you all a good time. And if you are in New Orleans, I definitely want to invite you to check out my own sister, Janikiata Holder Mincy. She uh, will be uh, working with the Tales of the Cocktails group out there. And I also want to shout out to Candice uh, Mitchell, who is the uh, co-founder of um, Mayavana. And she will be hosting at the Beauty Bungalow, which with much of her team who I had the pleasure of meeting last year. So, as always, I'd like to ask you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I want you to retweet this video and repeat this, and make sure to check us out next Friday on YouTube and also Instagram TV.
Remember to relax, relate, and resist. Thank you.